we live in a world, right, where for most things or for most people, if you're not making a million or something or hundreds of thousands or something, no one really cares to design systems and processes for what you need. You could sell a thousand of something and make a very good living out of that, like a thousand a month of it, right? And there's no system designed for that. Sorry, go on. Well, so this is where it gets really interesting because say if we're talking about like, yes, what you're talking about is usually people think in the order of like thousands or tens of thousands of, um, I think Toyota doesn't consider something mass production until they're making 25,000 of something. But the thing you have to remember is say if we're talking about this whole setup right here of you've got this boom, you've got the mic, you've got all this stuff. This you could view as one thing, but it's one thing that probably has 50 parts in it. Mm -hmm. And how many of those are injection molded? Because each one of those now needs its own mold, mm -hmm. now needs its own like runtime on a machine, mm -hmm. now needs its own individual all steps to where you're not usually talking about just one part. Mm -hmm. You're talking about a lot of different parts that are going into one thing, but now each one of those things, you're getting rid of that other associated costs. Yeah. And I mean, like at some point, if they, if they scale up to where it makes sense for them to go to these more traditional ways, then... Yeah, but that break-even point of where that shift happens has moved out massively in the last three to five years to where I, I don't think a lot of people even fully understand because a lot of engineers, even the ones that we talk to, uh, younger ones that have gone through like high school and college and have a more intuitive uh, understanding of 3D printing get it, but a lot of a lot of the old guard engineers still think that 3D printing is just something for prototypes or one-off yeah. or stuff like that. And I'll say to them, no, we could do thousands of parts, and it will be quite often cheaper than injection molding, if not mm -hmm. cost comparative enough to justify paying a bit of a premium to be able to get them next week yeah. versus yeah. if you're lucky next month. Yeah, and I'm thinking about things like where. Um, economies of scale goes out of the picture a little bit with some types of products where, for example, if you wanted to compete with, say, a product that is being sold at uh, Target, right? Target probably sells 10,000 units of this product every month, right? But you're trying to compete and you know you could make a good living selling 1,000 units, right? It, you can't compete on price if if the manufacturer is giving you something like you're giving you a price that's very expensive because your number of units is lower, but then maybe you have a product that customers want, right? You have a different value to provide, different from what Target, the big company, is providing, right? Then you just you can't compete simply because the system the, you are stuck with a system, the injection motor system, or some other system of manufacturing things that is just not efficient as it. At a medium scale, not even a really small scale, you're not making 10 units, right? You're making a thousand. It's it's really sad because I, I this subject actually is very interesting to me. And what do you think it would take to have a medium amount, a medium size amount of products compete uh, uh, with a large scale retailers, if you want, if you will, and still be able to compete on price? I mean, those already exist. There's starting to be uh, other companies that are building out because with with 3D printing, the way that you get economies of scale isn't the same as with traditional manufacturing. The way I usually think about it is traditional manufacturing is more like the CPU in your computer okay. to where you'll have like a handful of cores that are super, super fast and have really high throughput. You can think about those as like an injection molding machine or vacuum molding or one of these other things uh, that can just crank through hundreds or thousands of parts per day, but mm -hmm. they can only do that one part. Uh, they're very optimized, very streamlined, and very, 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 very fast. The way you think about 3D printing and how you scale it is more thinking about the GPU in your computer mm -hmm. to where you have a much larger number of slower processors splitting up the work mm -hmm. and working in parallel. Yeah. So it's not about having just like one 3D printer that can go that much faster to be competitive with injection molding because I don't know if that's we're certainly not gonna see that for probably a decade or two, if ever. But the way you do it is that you have, if you wanna be producing um, parts at the same speed as injection molding, and say your printer is a 100th the speed, so in the amount of time that your printer can produce one part, that injection molding machine can produce 100, the way you scale up on 3D printing is now you just have 100 printers. Oh. And you just have them all working together. 
splitting up the process and you mm -hmm. have them all networked and you have a back-end system that's monitoring the entire process. And at that point, it's just making sure that the actual cost to build and run the machines makes sense for the throughput and volume and the types of products you're producing. Uh, it's Right now, it's kind of, it's really hard to be competitive for consumer-based products. That's what we found is because people are cheap and they want the cheapest thing possible. They also usually have very specific ideas in mind about what a product should look like as far as surface finish or stuff like that. Uh, that's why we focused in, almost entirely on B2B, mm -hmm. on focusing on industrial robotics, drones, things like that, because they just want something that works and that is functional and capable and strong and cost-effective. And yeah. that was where we really kind of hit hard.